Thank you for tuning in today to our weekly broadcast. I'm your counselor, Dennis Barrow. As we continue this series on exposure, I pray that this series will continue to be a blessing in your life and you will continue to make the changes that are necessary so that your life can continue to reflect the goodness of God. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor and glory for being our God. As we come into the homes of your people today, bless them and give them insight so that your name can be glorified. Thank you for always hearing and always answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, the last week we talked about exposure and we talked about the mind will think most about what it is most exposed to. That was our first year, general discussion on exposure. And, and we, we said that every decision that I make is made based on the exposure that I have had. And so today I want to talk to you a little bit more about exposure. And get it now, we are talking about exposure to spiritual well-being. In other words, exposure to a godly lifestyle. And our statement for today, remember I give you a statement before I begin, so we can feast off that statement. And the statement for today is, your mind will reflect the environment in which you place it. Let's say it again. The, your mind will reflect the environment in which you place it. Don't forget that. Wherever you place your mind, whatever environment you put your mind in, it will reflect that environment. That's very important to get. So, are you putting your mind in a spiritual environment? Remember, your mind will think most about what it is most exposed to. But at the same time, I'm saying now, your mind will reflect whatever environment you place it in. So if you want your mind to reflect a spiritual attitude, if you want to have a spiritual character, then you've got to have an environment that's spiritual in which to place your mindset. You cannot place your mindset in any and every environment and expect it to reflect a spiritual outlook. It doesn't work. It will always reflect the environment in which you place it because that's what your mind will think about most. Because that's where you put it most. And that's where the decisions can come from. That environment in which you place your mind it brings out an environment, and that environment is embedded in you. It's embedded in me. And we bring out that environment with our speech, and with our attitude, with our conduct. Because that's where we hang most of the time. So, as we talk about spiritual well-being, think about the environment that you're placing your mind in, so that you can develop this spiritual well-being. Let's look at it a little bit. When you were growing up, let me ask a question. What, have you been, what were you exposed to? And now that you have been a young adult or an adult, what have you been exposed to? Because that exposure, get it now, when you were growing up, now you're a young adult or an adult, the environment in which you're placing your mind will determine whether or not there is spiritual well-being in your life, sir. So here is the thing. The exposure you had or you have will determine if you will accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. <laughs> that environment you're placing your mind in. Remember, it reflects that environment. It will also determine whether or not you read his word, the Bible. Some people argue about the Bible is no good, doesn't make any sense. And, but if you and your mindset has been placed in a spiritual environment while you were growing up, or even now, it will determine whether or not you read the word. 
it will also determine if you have devotion at home. Many times we don't have devotion in our homes. And as such, our home environment is not a spiritual one. And so we find all sort of confusion in our homes. Arguing and fussing and fighting and carrying on. All because God is not invited in this most precious area of our lives, our homes. It's important to get that. And if you have been exposed to a spiritual environment, you'll find yourself having devotion at home. Inviting the Spirit of God to dwell in your home so that you can have peace and joy and satisfaction there. See the exposure you had, where you place your mind, will determine also, do I attend church regularly? Or do I go once or twice a year, you know, Christmas and Easter? It will determine that. Because some people just go once, Christmas, or Easter. What about you? The environment in which you place your mind will determine if there's spiritual well-being. And if there is spiritual well-being in your life, in your mindset, then church will become an important part. Why? Because you read the word and you hear the word say, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the custom of some is. So we'll go to church, we'll read his word, and most of all, we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. The environment also, the exposure you had also, will also determine if you would encourage others to accept him. If you would encourage others to serve him. Again, the environment that you've been in, that exposure will determine that. If it's an exposure of spiritual well-being. Many times we have grown up in our homes and there was nothing when it comes to God. And we become adults and we have we heard the word and the spirit impressed upon us the ability to accept him. And once we do that, it makes a difference in how we now respond. We change our behavior, we change our attitude, our mindsets are changed and we start following the will of God. We start getting involved with his word. We start allowing his word to speak to us. This is very important to understand. Because if you say you love the Lord, then the environment that you need and that I need to place our minds in will be one of spiritual well-being. See, what is more important to us here is not only if we can help others or we can read the word, no, no, no. There's much more that's important here. What's important is how we live our lives. See, we can hear the word, but not be a, a doer of the word. And if the environment that we have been brought up in, or we live in now, is a, of spiritual well-being, we'll find ourselves living the word. We'll find ourselves carrying on based on what the word tells us to do. And that's why it's so important to understand spiritual well-being. There's, there's some scriptures in the Bible I would like you to turn to with me. These scriptures give us an idea of what God wants for us. Now, this exposure, as we said, I said, also helps us to live better lives. And living those better lives, as we come to these scriptures, Philippians 4 and verse 8. Philippians 4 and verse 8, down in the New Testament. Philippians 4 and verse 8. Well, this exposure that we had when it comes to spiritual well-being will tell us, will you love your neighbor? Do you love your neighbor? And when you ask who is my neighbor, not necessarily the person who lives next to you. No, no, no. Your neighbor is anyone you come in contact with. Anyone who needs your help. Anyone who is in trouble or who needs an, a word, who needs encouragement, and you are there. That's your neighbor. But here is the other one. The way you live your life. Based on that spiritual exposure, would you forgive? This is one of the major problems in even our Christian world. Forgiveness. You hear people say, I will never forgive them for what they did. Well, 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 well wait a minute now. 
Do you want God to forgive you? Well, if you want God to forgive you, the scripture says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others. And when I don't forgive, the person who I am not forgiving is not the person who is in prison. I am the one that's in prison because I am here holding a grudge against somebody. Spiritual well-being says, I will live the life because this is where I place my mind. The environment is a spiritual environment. And I'm reading the word and the word says, I need to forgive. That's important to get. Also, uh, it talks about, um, will you be one who is an example? In other words, a disciple. Showing the way. Remember, the disciples were called Christians because they said they looked like him. They looked like Christ. The example that he set. The life he lived. And they follow it. And now they are being considered Christians or Christ-like. Let's go, as I said earlier on, to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. This will give us an environment in which we need to place our minds. Philippians 4 and verse 8. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Beautiful environment. The environment of things that are praiseworthy, things that are excellent, things that are admirable, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are right, things that are noble, and things that are true. That's the environment we need to place our minds. And when we place our minds in that environment, guess what? We will find ourselves living Christian lifestyles, spiritual lifestyles. We will find ourselves discipling others. And we will find ourselves doing the things that Christ has called us to do to live a life that's beautiful, a life that's pleasant, a life that's pleasing, a life that's honorable. Others will see it. And they too would want to find out, what did you do? And now we can tell them of the goodness of God in our lives. There's another scripture that, that I need us to look at quickly. Colossians. Colossians, the very next book. <clears throat> Colossians chapter uh, 3 and verse <clears throat> 2. Colossians 3 and verse 2. And this again, anything in our life that's going to change it must start with the mindset. If it doesn't change in the mind, it will never change in our lifestyle. Everything must change in the mind. That's why we said your mind will reflect the environment in which you place it. That's why we said your mind will, 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 will as, as we said in the early, sorry, the first session, your mind, let's, let's, let's look at it again. Your mind, and I read it for you, will think most about what it is most <coughs> exposed to. Your mind will think most about what it is most exposed to. And so this scripture is telling us about our mindset. Everything starts in the mind. Every life battle is a mind battle. If you win in the mind, you win in life. If you lose in the mind, you lose in life. Here's the scripture. Colossians 3 and verse 2. It says this. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. What is it saying there is this? The environment in which God wants your mind to be is the spiritual environment. Things above. Christ-like things. This earth does not support Christ-like behavior. It doesn't. It has its own attitude, own environment. But God has an environment in which he wants you to live, which he wants me to live. I want one more scripture as we bring this to a close today. I want us to go to Romans 12. Go back to Romans 12. 
at verse 2. I want you to understand, everything starts in the mind. Romans 12 and verse 2, this is what it says. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Again, transformation has to start in the mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, perfect, and pleasing will. Everything that God wants for us starts in the mind. And if he gets the mind, then he controls everything else. Our spirit, in tune with his spirit, controlling our mind, which controls our body and our actions and our behavior, is important because your mind will reflect the environment in which you place it. Remember, your mind will reflect the environment in which you place it. Don't let that go. Because as you place your mind in various environments, you'll realize your behavior changes. And when your behavior changes, you will be accountable for it. Because your mind will think most about what it is most exposed to. So may God bless you as you continue to read his word, as you continue to study his word, as you continue to go to church, as you continue to help others come to know him better, as you continue to have your devotion at home, may you be blessed. May his name be glorified in your life. And may others see it and want what you have. Place your mind in the right environment. And give God the praise, the honor, the glory for his goodness towards you. So may God bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. See you next time. God bless you.